Hello everyone, what's up and welcome back to Hello Mendix. XPath is a powerful and useful way to restrict and filter data presented to the user. From workflows and microflows to retrieving data on a page, there are many different ways to apply it. Let's take a look at how we can apply the same XPath constraints in three different ways. Okay, so each of these methods requires us to have a relationship between our entity and the user's account. So I've done that here in my domain model already for us. So on this page, we have a simple orders view for the customer, uh, and we only want to show the customer their own orders for obvious privacy reasons. So the first way we're gonna do this is by using a data source microflow. We can click on this list grid and simply choose the data source tab and set it to microflow, and then we can select one. Create a new one, give it a name. Click OK. And we can go into that. So here in our microflow, we want to add a retrieve action. So I'm going to say insert and a activity. And I'm going to do a retrieve. And we want from database. And we select our orders entity. And then we want all of them connected to this account. So we're going to say from orders follow the relationship to account and we are now in the account entity and we want the account that matches the ID uh, which is available as a parameter over here the ID for the account so here we say ID equals account and it's that simple we need to remember to set our list as a return value and we need to give this access rights And with that, I can run the app and we can check out if it's filtering the results. Okay, the app is running, so I can log in and we can navigate to the page. So we can see it's filtering the orders correctly. There are six orders in the database in total, so there's only three here, and we can note that it's working okay. All right, that's all for that option. So option two is to apply the exact same X path to the list view directly. So instead of using a microflow on our page, we're just going to edit the list view and we're going to choose data source. And instead of microflow, we'll apply an XPath uh, filter and select our orders and entity again. And now we need to add our constraint. Now we add the same constraint, but just a little bit differently. Again, we follow the relationship from order to account and then to account again. But now, instead of uh, using the parameter account, we need to use uh, the context object, which in this case is current object. It's over here, you can see it at the top. So we want the ID equal to current object. So, our page is reloaded and we can see that the results are the exact same so we know it has worked correctly. This approach will have better performance because you don't have to wait for the microflow to finish executing in order to load the data. The query is applied directly to the front end itself. Finally, our third option is to apply this restriction at the database level itself. So what I mean by that is by adding an access rule in our domain model. So from here in the domain model, we can open up our properties window for the entity. And under the access rules, we have two access rules, one for user and one for admin. Admin, we're gonna leave unrestricted. He can view all of them. But for the user, we wanna make sure that they can only see their own orders. So for that, we're gonna to come uh, to the XPath constraint tab, and we're simply gonna click the path to user button. So. Path to user basically means path to the user's account and we have that relationship so I can just follow it um, and click select. Now when we rerun our app for the final time we should see the exact same results again. Running the app again and going to the page we can see it has delivered the exact same results as before. This method is probably the most secure as access rights are absolute and cannot easily be overwritten by application logic. When dealing with sensitive user information, I would recommend this approach as it is the most secure. 
Whichever method you choose, remember XPART supports multiple statements and operators. You can build complex queries with multiple criteria, but normally the simpler the statement is, the easier it is to debug and maintain. A good way to debug XPART is to apply it in a microflow first so that you can add a breakpoint and inspect the data returned in the variable pane. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan, and this is Hello Mendix.